Hi everybody, I'm Mary with Merry Go Round Quilts. Thank you for joining me. Today I'm going to show you a really quick and fun all over quilting design called Leaves and Loops. And it looks like this. So let's get started. Okay, let's get started. When I do this design, I like to start out making what I call a vine, which is just a curved line, kind of an arc. Off of this, I'm going to start and I'm going to make a loop and then I'm gonna make another vine. When I come out of this vine, I'm traveling to where I wanna to go to make my first leaf. So I'm gonna stop here, make a leaf, make a little spine on the inside. The way I like to think of it is this is a teardrop shape if that helps you when you're doing your designs. It's good to practice these on paper first so that you can get a feel for it. Once I've done my first leaf I'm free to go in any direction I want. I can go over here to the right or I can go up here to the left. I'm gonna just make another vine around here to the right, make my loop, make my another vine, and then stop at the point where I want to make my next leaf. So again, thinking of that kind of a flame, not a teardrop, sorry, more of a flame on the matchstick design, how it comes to a point you want your leaf to come to a point and to go back in. So it's smaller at the top and more wide or bulbous down there at the bottom. I'm done with that leaf. It's time for me to travel in another direction and make another loop. I like to do this design kind of going in columns or rows, whichever. I like to go up and then I come back down. So I'm just constantly going up and down and up and down. And as I'm doing so, I'm trying to make sure my leaves go in different directions. So I'm just gonna make another leaf right here, make a spine coming on the inside. You can make your spine, it can have a little bit of a curve. You can make it straight. You can go as high or as low as you want. If you only want it to be midway, a little short spine in there, you could do that. If you want it to go all the way up to the top, you could do that. I'm gonna make another loop and another, oopsie, I got a little confused there on my shape. <laughs> so that one's a little bit skinnier than the other two, but that is okay. Yes, when we're doing um, free motion quilting, we want to try to keep things as consistent in size as we can. So I'm gonna make these leaves kind of going in another direction because I think it looks good when the leaves are pointing in different directions. It just looks more fun. Come down here. If you want to make a tiny little baby leaf in an area to fill in an awkward spot that you had left open, you can go ahead and do that. Just keep on going here, trying to remember that match flame kind of uh, shape to make our leaves. You want to try to keep your leaves as consistent as possible. We're not going for perfection here. So just do as best as you can, and that is good enough. As with anything, it does take a little bit of practice to get to where you want to be. 
but that's fine. We all, we all know that. I know it's kind of frustrating sometimes. You want to be good right out of the gate, and that's not always possible. So that is why we practice, and that's why it's really good if you practice it on paper and your brain starts to remember the pathway to achieve this design. So then once you get to your fabric, your brain already knows where to go. And it's a lot easier for you to make these quilting designs once you have kind of committed them to free motion memory on how to achieve the design. So just get out a scratch paper, doesn't have to be anything fancy, and just start practicing doodling these designs on paper. And before you know it, you're going to be a pro at making these leaves. Now I'm going to be honest with you, this is one design making these leaves that does make me think and pause a second. Even though I have been doing it for quite some time, it's just one of those that my brain just kind of doesn't want to, um, my brain doesn't want to conform and it doesn't want to do what I want it to do. So when I'm making leaves, I have to make them a little bit slower and think about the actual pathway that I want to achieve. Now, when you're making your spine, it's okay if your line does not touch, like right here. You can see that this line does not come together. It doesn't have to, if you like it, it's however you like it. There's no rule. You're the, you're the visionary here and you're the artist, and so you can do whatever you like. Quilt police are not going to come banging down your door telling you that you did it wrong. So you want to just have fun with it and uh, find your flow. Right here I've got a little bit of a space so I'm going to make a leaf that kind of goes horizontally to fill in that awkward space. The key to any free motion quilting design is consistency consistency in the shape of your design and consistency in the width distance your design is apart. So I'm trying to keep mine about a half an inch or so apart as long as it's consistent. You don't want to have a gap and make your design very far apart from in some places and close together in other places. You want to try to have that consistent area in between your design. Again, it's something that's going to take practice and something that you're going to have to find your, your own way with. I mean, you might like your design a little bit farther apart, or you might want to do them very close together for some dense quilting for a design that is all close together. So there we have it. I'm gonna just stop right here, cut. And there we have our leaves and loops design. So, Give it a try and let me know what you think.